You're too polite, mate. Jack Kennedy threw the whip out of his hand in the running. It's <laughs> Hello and welcome to Anti Up episode nine. It's me, Dave, and him, Matt, once again. We're fresh off the back of going through the Cheltenham Festival on Sunday. We talk about it before. I think we mentioned even last week that it's important to take stock of your anti post bets at some point in the year. This is the prime time to do it after Cheltenham. Sorry, after Cheltenham, after Christmas. You'll see lots of action happening in the anti post markets now. There'll be lots of talk about different horses doing different things. So um, we're bearing all that sort of stuff in mind with our selections weekly. I mean, you might not think so when you hear mine this week, but basically we'll review the racing to a degree in this, but go check out the specific Cheltenham races where we cover them in a bit more depth. It's probably just easier than going over the same stuff. And it gives us more time to talk about our selection this week and a little view towards this weekend because there's not that much going on. So all in all, this is probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode if I would ever shut up. So Matt, is there anything from like the bits that we didn't see last week that have happened sort of in between the week that we should mention or should we just make them go to the other videos? The, the only one I've, I've maybe mentioned is Album Photo. Um, okay. Like I said, we covered it in, in more detail the other day, but um, I was fairly pleased with it. I know some people thought it was a, a bit lacklustre, but I thought he did what he needed to do and uh, just freshened himself up. He only needed the run white and freshened, freshened himself up. It's all about the Gold Cup. So I was quite pleased with him. Definitely. And of course, you put him up as a selection with the whole mantra of with the time and a place to be back in horses. He was always going to go on. We talked about it early on, didn't we? Yeah. And it worked out almost perfectly for you, didn't it? A shock in the King George. Yeah. The two fancied horses falling in the Savile's chase and then album photo getting the job done. And also the best part of it is because people were knocking him so much, I think it's riled up so many people that's now caused his price to come in a bit, bit further. So I know we talked about another thing, but I'll give you another little window for it. For all those people out there that were knocking the performance, what did you think about it that made it like a good performance for you? Well, the thing is, he he's never spectacular, is he? Is he jumping? So he was. I think when we spoke about it afterwards, we, we were sort of saying you, you and uh, Daryl were sort of saying he was maybe a little bit lacklustre going down the back, but he still he still got up by nineteen lengths on his first run of the season. He's going to come on loads for it. I just, I just don't see what, what people necessarily wanted to see from him. It's like, he can only beat what's in front of him. He'll have needed the run and on, onto the big day. It's all about it's all about the Gold Cup. That's why they've, they've stumbled on this method of, of getting ready for it. The last two years, it's worked. I don't see why it won't work again. The only thing I would say to that is like contrary to it, like I love Alvin Ferry, mate, as much as the next man, well, not as much as you, you are the next man at this moment, but it's Willie Mullins did say after me that he's maybe going to change up his training plans. Yeah. So within that, I just, there, were, there, was, like, there was definitely something about the performance, which is why people are talking about it. The fact that Willie's talking about maybe changing up the training plan to do stuff with him is like, maybe there's something in with him as well. But this is the whole point of these prep runs. It's the whole point of doing what they're doing now. And I know everyone says it's not all about Cheltenham, but it is, the, it is all about Cheltenham, really. It's something that for them to target their horses for. He's gone and won the race that he's intended to win. He's won it as nicely as, like you say, 19 lengths. Willie Mullins has run, that, run him in that race to find out how the horse is at that point in time to be able to make plans for what to do going forward, isn't he? Exactly. If, if he'd have won emphatically, Willie Mullins would have just done what he does every year. The fact that he found out now is so much better than finding out in the Gold Cup when it's too late. It's the same with when Champ fell in the dipper. People were nogging it, weren't they, saying that you can't get a chat off the back of a fall. But at least you find out before it happens in the big day. So even if it was potentially not as good as it could have been, it's just, if anything, that's just going to help Willie Mullins like, track into him or train him a bit harder or do what he's doing. And Willie Mullins is the absolute master for it. So I reckon your bet was bang on before you put it up anyway. And after now, it's absolutely ideal. Regardless of how the performance went, Willie Mullins has got enough information off the back of that to know what to do to get him there for the Gold Cup. And obviously with everyone else falling by the wayside, he just looks yeah. like even more bomb-proof now, doesn't he? Yeah, so I'm, I'm more than happy with the position now. I mean, obviously, you don't want to see horses falling, but um, like I said, the, the, his nearest challenge in the market, Manila Rindo, he's apparently he's come, come out of it fine, um, mm. but it's not ideal a fall at any stage, is it? So, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy with my position on Album. Well played, sir. We needed some of them, didn't we? We had the bad news with Dusart coming out. And yeah. It is, but obviously, for the purpose of this, we said at the beginning, we won't be talking about cash outs in there. I had my phone off the whole day when that news broke. I think it broke, broke about seven o'clock, the Racing Post website. Mm. Didn't turn my phone on until half 11. Bet365 still let me cash out for a profit. So 
hopefully a few people would have also seen the news and maybe got themselves out of it, but it's a loss for us on here. So without being so morbid, we've gone from Albert Photo Gold Cup to a horse that's not going to run at Cheltenham. Well done, Dave. We need to talk about some of the action coming up this weekend, I think. Now, I'm I'm like lackluster for this weekend anyway, because I know that it's like lesser competitions in terms of like the class of horses that are coming out. A few horses might have missed engagements over Christmas and they're just running in some weaker races now. So we might not find out too much about them. But there is actually some quite decent racing going on there. So I'll let you lead over that this week, please, Matthew. Yeah, OK. On Saturday, there's the Grade 1 uh, Finale Juvenile Hurdle. But yeah. do, we, do we know if, if the Irish can come over? Do we know if... They, they can't, I don't think. Definitely there is... Not. Uh, it's up on the racing post at the moment, but I think that uh, there, well, it says travel uncertainty. It could scupper his chance of coming over. Mm. All, all I'd, I don't know. All, all I'd say is I, I don't think they'll be coming over. It makes a massive difference to the whole race, doesn't it? Like it changes the whole complexity of it. When they were confirmed before for Christmas, before it was abandoned, they weren't allowed to come over, were they? No. But yeah, so that that I would like to see Qualixios again. But if he can't come, then that sort of puts pay to that one. Do you think if the Irish can't come over that there's anything in there from the British that could be interesting? Because who Grizz was declared last time, Nassalam wasn't, but I'd love to see the pair of them go against each other. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably side with Nassalam of the two, you know, by Nassalam, yeah. But I think I think Kulixios, Kulixios would be at Malachi if he can come to the last few days. And that's the good thing for, like, I mean, Willie Mullins, not sorry, Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott would like it because it's a yardstick for him with his own horse at home, isn't it? Mm. But it would also be a handy yardstick for us to see because if you get an English horse that beats the well-regarded Quilixios, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it makes the British horse probably look a little bit better. When this Nassalam and Hugris go against each other, we're still going to struggle to make any substance, aren't we? Because Nassalam's like, horses are pulled up behind him that he's beaten by wide margins. And if he goes and beats Who Grizz, we still don't know how good Who Grizz is because he's not yeah. had a run in the country yet. So we want, it's difficult with the juvenile races to get any depth to it. But if the Irish horses come over, it definitely will add that in there. Welsh National, anything to be interested in there, do you reckon? Native River might run, mightn't he? No, not something I've gone through in any depth, Dave, so far, to be honest with you. Not, uh, Welsh National. Fair enough. Oh, he's not running in that. He might be running the meet, I think, or something on there. That shows how much I've gone through it. Handicap, we don't need to talk about that, do we? Kempton's got some racing up on Saturday, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Sumiako Conti Chase will be interesting for the potential uh, British runners um, in the Ryanair. So we'll see how they stack up. Um, between Imperial R and Mr. Fisher for me, I think. Dep depending on the ground for Mr. Fisher, though, I'd say. Um, we'll both get beat by, by me in the Ryanair anyway. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'll see, see how that affects the market. Uh, after the race on Saturday, but yeah, I'd probably say between those two for me. Yeah, it's a fairly steady race. And I think Froden won it last year. I think it was changed to the Silvianco Conti chase last year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure I backed Froden in it because I just thought Nichols would want to win it with a name in there. He's got Master, Master Tommy Tucker running, isn't he? He needs to put mm -hmm. like his previous run out of the way behind him. But he's looked pretty good before, jumped okay around Kemp until he did make a mistake. Then you've got riders on the storm that potentially progressed last season, maybe not. So good at the start of this season, but could still be quite good. Just, I feel like me, the reason I'm bringing those horses up is that if Imperial Aura does go in there and sl slam them, there's tiny grey areas about like how good they might be. But I'm saying they're, they're half decent horses at least. And this does look like a, a grade two, which is obviously the, the grade that it is. But, you know, sometimes you get them and they look weak, don't they? Like yeah. they're grade three level. Sometimes they look better and there's like some grade one horses in there. If Imperial Aura is really going to be joint fav with Min, you'd be thinking that he's got to win this by a few lengths. And if he does go and win this by a few lengths, then he deserves to be where he is in the market. Anything other than a like few length victory for Imperial Aura, I would say you can all but write him off for the Ryanair personally. Yeah, agreed. Definitely. He needs to, to put these to bed fairly comfortably. Like I said, if if it's decent ground, though, I, I think I'd probably just edge towards Mr. Fisher at the prices. Um, and that would that'd be the end, like I say, of Imperial Aura's chances at the top of the market there for, for the Ryanair but yeah but it'll be a nice one to watch and I think again we did talk about before when uh, maybe when you would maybe when you put Min up um just that Imperial Aura before he ran in that race at Ascot when he was 25s before the race I feel like people that were going to be on his side mm -hmm. would have already been on side by then and again for them those people that run at the bigger prices this will be an important race to look at this wouldn't be a race I'm looking at and thinking seven to one in the Ryanair now 
oh, if it goes and wins this, it's going to shorten up loads because I don't think it will. I think it's expected to. And it, it might like it might go in a point or a couple of points tops just for the fact that it's recently won. But I think rather than backing him beforehand, you'd probably better take a punt on him backing him to win this race and then you could probably play out the winnings. Although I don't think he'll win a Ryanair personally. So there's some Irish racing Saturday. I think it's fairy house, isn't it? But it looks pants there. What about Sunday? Ireland's normally... Yeah. Get over there. A uh, nice novice chase um, at Nace with Blackbow, Captain Guinness and Anergamine all entered two miles. So should find out a little bit there how good Anergamine is and whether he's a, a two-miler or not against Captain Guinness. So Blackbow, I'm not so sure about. Well, suppose we'll, it, I'd like to see all three of them in there, to be honest with you, and then you get to find out how they stack up, don't you? Yeah, and it'll be interesting without Anergamine because his chase debut was on like trash ground I'm guessing mm. Sunday Island will be trash ground again he, but he got point form like winning point form on good ground mm. so I still can't figure this horse out in terms of what trip he should be going at but I think so I think I said it on the preview thing we did the time boys were going nuts after what he did at Galvin the dropping back now down to two miles with the view probably towards him, making him into maybe an arc horse just be interesting to see what he can do Captain Guinness were in there for a bit of substance would be nice to see him going wouldn't it yeah no the I think the thing with Anergamine is that they were, I think they were surprised that he was able to, to do what he did and that's why they're, they're dropping him back in, in trip. I don't think they saw him as a speedy horse at home, did they? I don't think they've mentioned that. So this is the, the acid test for him whether he can do it over two miles as well. Superb. Uh, there is exit on Sunday, but there's nothing there. There's a decent, well, the best probably race of the weekend in my eyes, still at Nace, isn't there? The uh, Laura of Nace novice hurdle. Bob Orange is in there. Yeah, Bob Ollinger's in there. I think uh, Henry de Bomerad said he's going to run. Um, uh, and my, my other selection's actually hopefully going to run in that race, Dave. My selection this week is hopefully going to run in that race. There's 11 different horses in there that I could pick out. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, one I'm going to mention just before you go on to yours, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. is Ashdale Bob. Mm -hmm. Because um, he obviously won the grade two the last day when there was a few horses in there like Esky Lane, the likes that were like, relatively fancied. He beat wide receiver on debut and then wide receiver came in front before him after. I would, I'd pray that this horse runs on Sunday because, it, again, it, like, it will add substance to Bob Ollinger because if Bob Ollinger goes and trounces this horse, then yeah. it, it makes me realise that Bob Ollinger is probably better than I thought he was. If Bob Ollinger gets beat by this Ashdale Bob, doesn't necessarily mean that Ashdale Bob's pants. It means that Ashdale Bob's decent, but maybe it like sort of confirms the level I think Bob Ollinger could be at. But yeah. it'll be interesting because it's over two and a half miles, isn't it? But it could end up being a pointer to, well, it'll be badly more for Bob Ollinger, but potentially for something like Ashdale Bob or a horse in behind could be a pointer to other races. I've probably stolen your thunder there, haven't I, by saying it could be a pointer to other races. It's not Ashdale Bob, is it? No, it's not Ashdale Bob, mate. Right, well, this is obviously perfect timing. You're going to go first this week, mate. Who is, like, I don't even know how many selections we put in. Who's your 50th selection on episode nine? It's Fant Fantasio Delen. Or Fantasio Delen. How are we saying it? Fantasio Delen? Fantasio Delen? How are we saying him? I used to say um, Arpeggio Delen. So okay. I, I, I'm saying it completely wrong, so don't say that. <laughs> Fantasio Delen. That's what we'll go with then. Um yeah, he's, he's, he's a horse with some decent bump from um, from last season uh, in behind the sort of likes of Duke Up, who's gone on to run fourth in the Royal Bond and um, appreciate it. He's obviously uh, turned into a classy horse. And then they pitched him in, uh, straight into a listed novice hurdle at the back end of last season over two miles, which was obviously an in, inadequate, uh, inadequate trip, trip for him. Mm. Behind uh, Cedarwood Road and Beacon Edge and in Tukas, a few decent horses in there as well. Uh, Gordon Hillis always talked about him as more of a stater. And at the beginning of the season, they'd sort of mentioned him as a possible Albert Bartlett horse aren't in, the, in his stable tours. And then this season, we've seen him out in a, a maiden hurdle at Nace um, over two mile three that Colm of Fire uh, ran in last season, um, where he finished second behind Manilia mm -hmm. with Statler back in third and three, three of them were miles clear of the rest. But what was interesting when I watched it back is Jack Kennedy dropped his uh, whip after the uh, jump the second last. When it was the three of them were just getting into a battle, um, and when you count back, Vanilla's jockeys used his whip six times in that period that, that Jack had to go without his. Um, so while, while you can't you can't be um, confident that um, Fantasio Dillon would have won, you've got to mark that up for the fact that he was just hitting the front um, 
and Jack's dropped his, dropped his whip. So he's had to go all, all that distance from two out to the finish without his whip. And then, so going on from that, Vanilla has gone on run very close behind Fruit Delen in the grade two hurdle at, at Limerick over two mile seven at Christmas. And then Statler's gone on and won a maiden hurdle over two mile four ahead of um, beating Glenn Vanstrom, who, who uh, Willie Mullins, I think, mm-hmm. thinks really highly of as well, the mayor. And Statler's now anti post favourite for the Albert Bartlett. So that, that form line reads really well to me. I really like that, that race for the form that they've, uh, they've gone on to show afterwards. So now, now he's entered um, in the Lollas, Lollas and Ace um, on Sunday. There's several other Gordon Elliott and, and Jingingstown runners in there as well. But if he were to run, obviously it's a big step on, up in grade. But at least we'll get to find out where, where we stand with that. So you, you might see a quiet running behind, um, behind the others. And then maybe one more run in less deep water. Um, and you could see him maybe popping up for something like the Martin Pipe then. That's, that's, that's the way I... I'm looking at him going maybe down the Martin Pike route. Now, I know there's wide receiver for, for Gordon and Gingstown, favourite for that race, but Gordon and Gingstown aren't um, too worried about running the, the horses against each other either. So, um, but the, the way I'm going to play in Davis is 25 to 1 any race with Will Hill because if he does prove that he was better than what we maybe think, then he could end up still in Albert Bartlett and then. Mm. Um, and you want that covered. You don't want to necessarily throw all your eggs in, in one basket, but I'm playing him as if he, he could be a Martin Pike horse. But he's 33 to 1 for that, 25 to 1 any race. I think keep your options open, see how he goes at the weekend. Hopefully he runs. If you don't, not all is lost. You've still, still got the chance. But yeah, that's the way I'm going to play him 25 to 1 any race. Very convincing case, mate. Very convincing case. Beautifully done, to be honest. And I like that. I mean, it is like it is referred to as the Lawler of Nace, and that's what obviously what it is. But it's the Slaney novice hurdle for the people that like it from the olden days. And if you want to see stats and stuff from um, uh, like Wikipedia and what's what's not, but like the, the winners list of this particular race is decent. So we've got the fact that people will be watching it for the likes of Bob Odden just going towards Valley more. Like I say, Ashdale Bob might be like an eye catching behind. It might end up being a, an Albert Bartley horse. Um, there's the other one of Jesse Harrington's that run in there that could be another one that points into that. So while people are looking towards the front and looking for these eye-catching performances in terms of like how well they run, you are spot on to be picking out these sorts of horses that might not even be the slightest bit eye-catching, but you have to just think about what the bigger picture is and what the plan might be with some of these horses. So I like it, mate. And that's, that's the thing. This time of year, you've got to think of these sort of plans. There are some key races I know that Giggins Town and Elliot use as the year goes on. So again, timing wise, so when those horses are ended up will uh, prove fruitful, but mate, that's a, that's a decent one. And like you say, if he doesn't go in this race, it is that definitely isn't the end of the world. There's like, I said, there's other feeder races they go in with. Um, but I, I almost feel like when he enters horses like these into races like this, where they haven't shown enough class to be like, to be winning the race, it almost gives you a tiny bit of a clue that these are a handful of horses that he's got in mind for something this season. So your spot on mate to pop that up in an early race market. Very well done. Yep. Very well done. Just one this week or anyone else you want to pop in? <laughs> just one. The, yeah, just one. One I've been on winning an hour and about, but now I'm going to stick with my boy this week. Okay, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to say it or not, but I was, I mean, I was smiling so much when you were talking about Jack Kennedy and the whip. I feel like I need to... Just let the guys at home know why I was smiling so much about that. You're too polite, mate. Jack Kennedy threw the whip out of his hand in the running. It's, it looks as, like he probably didn't do it like intentionally, but if you watch the replay back, it's, it looks potentially deliberate. doesn't mean it was, but Jack Kennedy threw the whip out, mate. And that enhances your, <laughs> your even further. But that's enough of me pooping on your parade. I, I mean, I've got one that's going to not like divide people is not even... Correct. This is nothing Moses like about it. I would, I mean, if we did a poll, maybe maybe I'll get some sort of comment poll going up. I probably could, couldn't I? See how many likes and dislikes I could get on a comment. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my selection up in the comments because I just think the vast majority of you will be against me and no one will see my picture. And to be honest with you, I probably need that like a cold splash of water on my face because you're, again, you'll be too polite and you'll say at the end, yeah, yeah, I like that, Dave, I think, because obviously it's a great shout. But, ah, right. I'm going, there's certain races we need to get like horses featured into. I have a short list for most of those races now. I reckon I've got the next five or six weeks worth of selections sorted out, 
it's just timing to get them in. This one, I feel like I could have held off for a tiny bit. However, I, this for me, the, the time is now. This feels good. And I, oh, I, I'm, I'm excited about him. Basically, it's the champion chase. We saw what happened over Christmas. Nube Negra beat Altior. Chacun Poussois was like freakishly impressive over in Ireland. And let's not play that down the slides. He was, well, he was real good. But he's priced accordingly. A horse that genuinely I could have put up in episode one yeah. is making an appearance now because the fact that Chacun Poussois was so impressive, we can never be scared of one horse. I mean, unless it's Shishkin or unless it's Envoy, one of those races. You can never be scared of one horse. When it comes to a championship race, and it comes to a championship race, the, the particular trainer of that favourite, Jacques Compossois, he's never won the champion chase, Willie Mullins. Gold Cup was the last one for him to do. Did that with Alvin Photo. There's just, there's just lots of things, like not to necessarily pick holes in Jacques Compossois for the sake of it, but picking holes in Jacques Compossois for the sake of it. It, again, it just alludes to that there's got to be some value in there somewhere else. And I've probably said enough that people know who it is. It's Defi Desoy. 20 to 1 for the champion chase is going up. And there's many a reason that I could give you for why I'm doing it, but I don't even think I need to sell this horse to many people. He's a two-time festival winner. We know he went missing after his triumph season. We saw him the year that he won the Marsh, that he was pants on chase debut. Like, we know he's got a pants performance in him. Did it in the champion chase last year, didn't he? But if we just cast our minds back to that champion chase last year before they all withdrew... He would vie for favouritism for the race anyway, with the likes of Chacon Poussois and Altior. Now, obviously, granted, Chacon Poussois probably looks a better horse this year. Not probably, definitely looks a better horse this year. Altior looks a worse horse this year. And Deffy doesn't even look like the same horse in the slightest. But he's so far away from what he did last year that you can, you can sort of put a line for it. I feel like with Altior's performance, he just never looked at the races with his jump and all that sort of stuff. And he's never done that before. It's uncharacteristic for him. Whereas with Deffy, as much as it's not the most positive selling point, he does throw in bad races. Now, if you go back to last season when he was emphatic, his best performance, bar none, was in the Clarence House at Ascot, where he was going up against him to sell again. He'd already beaten him in the uh, in the Tingle Creek. And then he got he abs like absolutely destroyed him at Ascot. And under so at Ascot previously, had won the race over a number of times. And it was probably his better performances around there. So I just, I just think that if he does go Clarence House chase up against Politolog, because Politolog's going to go there, Politolog's run around Ascot a few times, but normally two mile five he goes for. So I'm not saying that he's going to get confused with what trip he's running at, but two mile five at Ascot probably suits him. Two miles at Ascot may not suit Politolog ideally. Um, Deffy Desoy, we know it suits him perfectly. If they do go up against each other, Deffy's going to be a bigger price than Politolog, but I think Deffy's going to spank him. I, I proper do. And it's rude to say that to Politolog because previous champion chase winner, recent Tingle Creek winner, but Deffy's Tingle Creek was more impressive. De Deffy's a better horse for me, but just without, without argument. And it's, again, it's rude to say in it, but Deffy's better. If he doesn't go there, because Frank Berry's come out and made comments, we know what's going on with JP at the moment. He's not having any runners. And, and I think they've talked about trying to get Deffy fit as well. Um, Game Spirit's potentially an option. Now, he hasn't been around Nubu before, but we know who else is going for the Game Spirit. Man like Altior. So when he goes there and downs Altior in the Game Spirit, because let's not forget, Altior did win the Game Spirit nicely last season after getting beat by um, Surname. But Nico asked him and he showed those afterburners, much like Paisley did, much better at Ascot, like second run after the long layoff to show those afterburners. But there were horses that, like So Raw, that were fairly close to him that for a second, people didn't see it as that good. So what I'm saying is, Deffy's either going to run in the Clarence House chase or he's going to run in the Game Spirit. They're both two-mile races. So there's no issue of people thinking he might go Ryanair later down the line. In either of those races, he's not going to be favoured. He's going to be expected to get beaten. So if he just runs well and just gets beaten or he runs a few lengths behind, he's still not going to be the 20-1. to 1. He might shorten up a little bit, but he's not going to get much bigger. Obviously, if he gets completely wiped out of the park, then hey, oh, it's a dead bet, in it? But if he wins either of those races, he's going to go five, six to one second fav because Chacon Poussois is going to take up the, smart, like the majority share of this market and something else has got to fill that gap. Now, I know Put the Kettle On was well beaten. People are talking about how she's got the Cheltenham form, all that sort of stuff. A mare hasn't won a champion chase. I just, I just don't think she's going to be cut up for it. I don't think Nube Negra is good enough to win it, although he downed out to your. Politolog won last year because Deffy didn't turn up, so I can't see him beating Shaq on. And then we talk about horses like Wait Impatiently, Notebook that doesn't even like Cheltenham. 
Deathy's just too big a price. 20 to 1. I kept that short as well, didn't I? Come on, Matt. Not for you, mate. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> no, you know, mate, I, I, I love Deffy and the two the two I liked at the start of the season were Altior and Deffy for this at the prices. Um, I'm confident as well, like you said, that at the best, Deffy is a better horse than, than Politolog. Um, he should be in, in his prime as well, age-wise, um, Deffy. I think he's eight now, isn't he? So he should be at his best. It, it's it's the fact that, like I said, if he throws in a bad one, one of his bad ones on his bad days, he's really bad. But on his good days, he's really good. So if he can re- uh, rekindle that spark, then yeah, I think you're onto a good one, mate. I really do. Yeah. And I think it's worth mentioning as well. He, he obviously had that poor juvenile season where it's the whole season. But like I say, last year, when he was well beaten by Layla and he like he just was terrible, he was there or thereabouts, made a really bad mistake at the end. Obviously, in the uh, um, slower, it was. I feel like it was a similar thing. He actually looked like he was travelling okay-ish. Admittedly, it was a lot further out, probably about four out, I think it was. And then he and then he was just pants. But the fact Dickie Johnson looked after him, didn't he? I like, didn't try and ride a finish or anything. So there obviously was some, whatever it was, they might not even get to the bottom of it, but there was something amiss with him there. And he did it the pre- previous season, came back out, went and beat top of the game, didn't he? Went top of the game, was miles back. And then, like I say, ended up winning at the Cheltenham Festival. So I, I feel like this horse has been with the yard long enough that they can probably get him right. And you've got to forgive him that run, to be honest with you. Now, he was about 14 to 1 at the start of the season. So he's not much bigger than he was at the start. But I think that just shows maybe there's a, a voice around me that agrees that although he was pulled up in that race, the way that the race is sticking out now, it's not like he's been pushed out to 33s, is it? The other thing I will add as well is when he had that poor performance between his juvenile and the season after, there, uh, Philip Hobbs had a bit of a sickness in the yard. And when, I, when I spoke to Dickie Johnson a while back, he said that Deffy almost died as well that time. Did he? Yeah. So that's like yeah. that's how serious it was. So to come back and do what he did, and then things like now that like they'll be nursing him and whatever it is, like they'll 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 know what to do with him. They'll know how to look after him. I just think for what the horse has been through to go and win the triumph like he did to go and do those bits and pieces, like he's a proper, proper horse. And he's already proven at Cheltenham, Mini. So I've said enough. At least it's padded out the episode. So that's the only one I'm putting up this week you'll be pleased to hear. Just Deffy in the champion chase at 20 to 1. He might not run in that Clarence House chase, like I say, might not be fit enough, but it's a bet that can just sit there for a little while. Um, see how it goes. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that now. I mean, I'd rather be on Chacon and Poussoir at a massive price, but he never was a massive price, so... Hey ho, the way that it goes. So that's episode nine out of the way. We will obviously be back next week to review what's going on. Then it starts to get proper naughty. We'll have um, trials day. We've got that Clarence House Chase meeting that will be coming up. Um, then we'll be moving on to like the Dublin Racing Festival. At the moment, so today we're recording this. This is the fifth. It'll probably be out on the Wednesday, the sixth. But the Chase Championship races have been like the entries have been uh, accepted today. So that's the Champion Chase, the Gold Cup, and the Ryanair. Each week that goes on now, more of those races are filled up. So you get Gold Cup Queen Mother Ryanair this week. Then the 12th, the Champion Hurdle, Mares and Stayers. Then it's the Arkle National Hunt Chase, the Novices Chases. Then it's the Novice Hurdlers, including the Triumph. Then we're talking about February, a little bit further down the line, to get into things like the handicaps, the, the novelty races, basically, your fox hunts, all that sort of stuff. And then the cross country, the bumper, and the mare's chase is all the way through to the 2nd of March. So there's a long, long way before anything's got to be entered for that. Plenty of time for Willie to make his mind up about Benny for the mare's chase. But it's just going to be interesting over the next few weeks. The markets are going to move because horses will have entries for races. And it's going to make people start talking about it. Like Altior will have his entry in the Ryanair because why would you not put him in there? just in case. And then people will start saying, oh, he's going to go for the Ryanair. So just be mindful that these things are happening in the next few weeks for those races and the markets will move accordingly. It's also important to note with these entries, obviously if a horse hasn't been seen for a while and you're hoping that they're going to come out and then they haven't even picked up one of his entries, pretty much tells you they're out for the season. So helps in a way with that. So just be mindful that the Betfair exchanges will be suspended at certain points. Don't worry about it. Nothing untowards happening. And cash outs might be suspended with some bookmakers. Yeah. But on the cash out thing, a couple of years ago when there was some entries coming out, I can't remember who it was. I mean, I should remember. I backed a horse for the Ryanair, wasn't even entered. Bet three to five, let me cash out, and I cashed out for a profit. <laughs> Paddy Power and Betfair aren't as kind, though, are they? Usually, they're, they're the ones who, if you've got anything that you was sort of umming and ahhing about, and maybe the time isn't it very soon to, to be cashing out of that one. 
Absolutely. And they, I, I still think with Betfair Paddy Power, because obviously they're one in the same and they've got the exchange, they must use the exchange data to help them know what to do with horses, i.e. if a horse is being like, like Fernie Hollow or whatever, if they want to suspend a cash out, I reckon they're going to pick it up sooner than others. Yeah. But yeah, happy day. So that's wrapping up the episode for this week. Thank you very much for joining in. I will stick Deffy to sign the comments, but I'll be interested to know thumbs up, thumbs down for him. Am I literally losing the plot? Because... I don't think I am. I reckon I'm onto a golden one. And then we will see you next week. Thank you for the support. Also, the subscribers, we're nearly up. I mean, I should have done this at the start of the episode, but we're almost at the thousand now. So basically, the content for you guys is about to explode. And then and, and I won't be putting up horses like Deffy when that happens. So thank you for your support. Matt, any signing off comments? Because I didn't let you talk again. No, happy with that, mate. You do the talking for both of us, Matt. I'm happy with that. Beautiful. Well, thank you. And we'll see you next week.